competition of the central banks are bringing the big bang migration to ISO 2022. And that will bring value to your portfolio. Why I say so? Because now it's a market which has been kept under SWIFT and it's now changing. So if your portfolio is aligned towards the future, it will have XRP because that's a huge market which we are eyeing at, $150 trillion and the war is actually on. Now it's getting pretty clear to you and me that XRP will remain as the blood which runs through the veins of Interledger protocol for the new financial system. So if you need more clarification of why this is happening, and how it will turn out and what we are looking at in the future. Watch till the end. Welcome to the Scientific Investor family, where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly. If you so value for your time, please do support the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. If you would like to extend your support, you can use the PayPal, Patreon or the XRP wallet address given in the description below. Patreon will, will allow you to unlock more value for your portfolio with other assets. Now let's look at these news, what it really means. Because all of this, if you look at the news and then the timeline at which this all are happening, it really gets interesting. And who is highlighting this? Like the institutions, say American Express, then this is a report directly from a European Union Central Bank. So all of these point towards one thing. And what's it? We are gonna explain that in detail. While explaining the same, for you guys to get more clarity, I would be using some of the video clips from different uh, channels which actually will give you more value. Why? Because this information which we are about to explain using these documents, this will actually give you more insight into this. So as you go through the explanation, it's going to be much more interesting for you. So now let's begin. We found to have the entire community moving its payments business into this new syntax. No, the, the issue that we know, the challenge that the European landscape will be facing is that the ECB is forcing a migration much earlier in that same context, so the migration will happen by November 2021, which means that all the institutions in Europe somewhere will have to be ready for that migration far, actually far in advance compared to the rest of the world. But that migration is happening everywhere. Okay, but what are the main challenges for the banking industry to be ready? They need to make sure that all the systems that today talks a language will be able to talk the other, the other language. And more importantly, the beauty of 2022 is about rich data. It's really about being able over time to proposing eventually another so the migration towards ISO 2022 standard is on. But that being said, you have to understand there is a little bit of delay in that migration. If you look here, SWIFT as kind of delaying this process and we understand that European Central Bank is responding to SWIFT. SWIFT is now asking a timeline for say towards 2024, 2025 for a complete migration into this new standard. However, you can see that this is not happening. European Central Bank has given them time till the end of 2022, November 2022. Previously, it was designed to meet these requirements by November 2021. And that's what you heard here. So even if SWIFT is going to do that or not, that is going to happen with or without SWIFT. And that's why when we highlight these, it kind of gets a really interesting. Why? This article shows Ripple gets a role in ISO 2022 standard migration. So who are the migrants? Here it's banks, financial institutions. From where are they coming? The previous ISO standard, which was completely running, you know, for payments, which was running on SWIFT. So now where are they going? to an universal standard where everyone talks or understands each other's language, which is ISO 2022 for interoperability. And what are the central banks trialing, experimenting, piloting? It's the Interledger protocol. And how do you get a taste of this? You go through different documents, you go through different uh, central banking reports, you kind of 
can easily note that these are really happening. Now, let's jump into the next video and listen to what it says. The migration will happen in various stages over five years. Countries and regions worldwide are migrating at a different pace and may impose new data requirements at different times. Adopt a program structure and target architecture that is sufficiently agile to cope with this vast volume of change. And number five, simplify. COVID that kind of easily highlighted you that anyway, they're going to migrate by next four to five years. Okay. But if you look at the banner behind there, you can see them talking about unlocking opportunities to drive business values. Now you will get to know the same when you go through ISO 22, ISO 2022 standards and the new payment system proposed by the central banks and Ripple, which is the highlight here because Ripple is the company which is coming out with this new potential to highlight that you can unlock more value. And when we say that, do keep this in mind. This is a comparison which is happening between a company built eight years ago and a company built 45 years ago. Why? Because when you come to the bottom, you come to clearly understand that yes, they do offer the solution, but only if you use an asset named as XRP. You still have confusion, right? Anyway, let's go through the next one and clarify this. Now, this is a bit lengthy video, so I'll be taking you through different points which are important. Here, they actually discuss about what is ISO 2022 and what it isn't. Now, this I'm showing you just to clarify that you have to understand ISO 2022 migration doesn't mean SWIFT. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's specific to SWIFT. So if you look at that, it is ISO 2022 is a recipe of making financial message standards. Mm -hmm. It's a global messaging standard for financial business transactions or any kind of interchange. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the bottom, you can understand it's purely cross-border or it's SWIFT specific and all. So that kind of takes you towards the conclusion what we discussed previously about the domestic and international system. If you remember, we highlighted that the domestic and the international system will have to be interoperable. That is why we are looking at this. Now, why should that be the case? Because the entire institutions around the globe are now, you know, they are working across. They have a lot. They are like multinational companies. Most of them do tend to work outside different countries. They have employees all around the globe. So this is where we are headed. Uh, and payments, a very important part of that. Uh, within payments, as you can see from the adoption map on the right, uh, from ISO, uh, there is a lot going on. Uh, at Volante, we sit on a couple of ISO working groups. Um, I think uh, Nazreen mentioned uh, both of the ones that she's on in the beginning. Um, one is uh, the RTPG, the Real-Time Payments Group, uh, where we're involved in actually defining uh, the message standards for real-time payments. Uh, we're also on the CGIMP forum, uh, which is more about uh, standards of financial messaging between banks and corporates. Uh, and we work directly with market infrastructures. So, for example, we have a rep uh, working with the Bank of England, uh, uh, part of their working group that is migrating uh, their wire system champs to ISO 2022. Uh, so we have a front row seat, if you will, to a lot of this activity. But I want to highlight... So they kind of easily highlight that they are at the front row seat of this migration. And if you go to their website, Volante Pay, you can see how they are looking at ISO 2022 migration, mm -hmm. how they are partnering with different institutions and then go check Ripple's API, mm -hmm. how they are integrating the same for this interoperability standard. That also brings interoperability along with settlement together with what the huge purpose of solving the friction and that really is happening now if you continue listening this you'll get another perspective regarding you know payments in different countries and how they are bringing in new rail in next two to three years so the deadline say for canada remains like 2022 to 2023 so it's way ahead than swift's migration towards iso 2022 right so the new rails or the new infrastructure new plumbing however you name it it's up to you but they are all building about that and talking about that openly now let's listen to that 
highlight a couple of areas uh, which I think will be of interest to all of you. Uh, one is, uh, let's start with something that's already been live for a while and is uh, probably familiar to many of you. Uh, that's SEPA in Europe. That's probably the best known example of a payment scheme that is based on ISO 2022. It's live today, uh, high volume, all kinds of messages going back and forth that are ISO based. Um, now, that typical bulk SEPA, that's what's been live for over a decade now. But the year before last, same, uh, they've released a very aggressive modernization of messages to support instant payments as well. Uh, or systems that send or receive empty messages are going to have to convert to MX. Uh, there is going to be a coexistence period, but we think this is something really that anybody who uh, transacts with MT should be looking at now because it isn't going to be a straightforward mapping exercise. Uh, last one is uh, just north of the border, uh, Payments Canada. Uh, they've released a very aggressive modernization roadmap. Uh, they plan to transform all of their clearings, you know, their wire and ACH equivalents, and put in a new real-time rail, you know, all based on ISO 2022 by 2022 uh, or 2023, you know, five years, basically. So aggressive roadmap. And one of the interesting... The isotopian enhancement. Now, in that part, you listen to them talking about SEPA mm -hmm, in another part of the globe and then in Canada, Payments Canada, right? So they are both working on this now. And if you recognize the map which they showed, there are a majority of the countries which are moving already into the standard. They are there. Now, it's time for US and other leading actors to get on and build this new rail to provide that. Now, if you look at Federal Reserve's financial service document, they are highlighting QC 2021 for SWIFT will facilitate industry migration. Now, is it really happening? No, we clearly understand that SWIFT is kind of delaying this because they can't do it right now with their ancient technology. Mm -hmm. And central banks are not actually happy about the same. And then you get to see this again. Ripple gets a role in ISO 2022 standard migration. So what are we talking about? Migrating financial institutions into new standard. So just, yes, we need the regulatory clarity for using digital assets, but if they are on the same plumping, then it would be easy for them to source liquidity when we have that regulatory clarity. So this are the kind of the value approach which you can see while we walk towards ISO 2022 standard, right? So listening to these contents clearly kind of gives you the ability to form your opinion but remember, the next contents which are following here will be explaining the big bang kick to Swift through the Ripple's pipeline. If you read through this, it kind of highlights the Euro system. They are looking at this implementation will follow like a big bang approach. Now it's actually scheduled for 2021. Now there will be a delay till 2022, but that's that being said, they have given it time until 2022, but that doesn't mean every institutions are going to delay it till that time. As you heard from the video, they are all looking at the same stuff because they all want to jump into the same wagon as early as possible because they don't actually want to lose their market share just because they are a little bit slow. Now, in the same document, we have actually used this document previously in a various aspect, different aspect, but now if you look at the same, when they talk about cross-border payments and interoperability with new standards, you have to see what they're talking about. They talk about solving for liquidity and, you know, they kind of name the solution from uh, Ripple. Now, we talked about that previously, so I won't actually jump into that. Instead, you can see they are talking about the current rails which are being used. Mm -hmm. And then they highlight the holy grail of cross-border payments is to make the payment messaging and settlement of value happen together in real time on the same network. What do you think they are talking about? At the bottom, they have given the alternatives to SWIFT. Past five years, there has been a lot of payment initiatives, proof of concepts, pilots, blah, 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 blah then you get to see the example them directly talking about a ripple net mm -hmm. and then highlighting all these you know, progressive approaches which the dlt is bringing into the board 
And if you go through the entire document, you can clearly understand how they look at XRP, how they are like, they do understand how this system works. This act as a vehicle currency, a bridge currency. So they are now clearly understanding that this is shaking the system. And if they need the scalability, they are going to jump into this standard because anyway, they understand the correspondent banking network is reducing the existing system. Huh? In the existing system, it's reducing, but for them, they can't actually get out of this market because this market is so huge and it's like a war between two systems, which is old and which is new, like an existing power and a rising giant. So if you look at that in clear perspective, it kind of gets easy for you to understand that the next area for cross-border payments of future is not the previous date, outdated, you know, rails which was created by swift now we are entering into an area with rich data and it shows you that all the transparency should be provided with speed and efficiency now that kind of takes you directly to this one now this particular item you know the infographics has been prepared by stidas whereas the information is from ripple swift mckinsey payments uh, accenture you know all these areas so the information which you are getting here is kind of valid if you understand it properly. So I'll actually link this in the description. So if you would like to go through that, it would be easy for you to understand this. Now it's not something really small because if you look here, say when they highlight it here, like the products, they also highlight that from November, September, 2028, all of these has been merged and every customer can use this easily. So all of these new information are kind of updated there. And then we come to this particular article. It's not talking about Ripple. It's not the XRP hype train as the naysayers say. They talk about ISO 2022 migration, uh -huh. then the FinTech innovation. Then they generally talk about, you know, CBDCs versus crypto, how CBDCs are being proposed as an alternative to the current digital asset space. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a disruption that's kind of taking out money from the system where it's not even nearly or half at the all time to that all time highs. But when you come to the bottom, it's clearly highlighted. One of the crypto that would be benefiting would be XRP because it act as a bridge currency and it will be acting as a bridge currency between central banks in the international transactions using central bank digital currencies. So now with that understanding, if you are looking at this, now you will understand why we are talking about that. Now this is a recent one, not that old, right? If you look at this timeline about the talk regarding ISO 2022 and reach here, September, late September 2020, then you get to see the central banks strike back against Bitcoin. And how will they do that? It's kind of highlighting the decentralized finance system, but they are still looking at a surge for the price of XRP. If you go through these documents again, you kind of get the information which we described previously. Different regional payment system, chips, uh, SEPA, and all around the globe. Mm -hmm. And now all of them will be united with a new standard messaging platform, which is ISO 2022, the standard which they have to go through. And one of the area which they can concentrate easily would be jumping in to a ledger which would unite them in a similar manner which is interledger protocol and they highlights that previously right so this is kind of taking you towards that holy grail of payment which can be conducted where it's in iso 2022 where the first dlt firm which is ready with that system is ripple now when you understand this like ripple is attacking so for you know they are delaying it again and again and then you get to understand, yes, Ripple has a role to play in this migration. It's kind of easy to say, whatever we talked here is looking bright. Why? You come into this area of American Express, they are not talking about Ripple, they are not talking about XRP. Clearly, if you read this, they are talking about the cross-border payments to become faster, more transparent and easier. But when you read through this stuff, they kind of understand clearly that Swift is kind of lagging. They are not updating based on the technology. And then they show Ripple, a more radical blockchain based approach. And it's not just the technology or software they're talking about. If institutions choose, they can use XRP in payment flows to improve liquidity between the corridors. 
cross-border payments. And then it comes to the tighter regulatory clarity. And the bottom here, you kind of get to see clearly that ISO 2022 implementation is coming. Mm -hmm. And this is going to happen in UK, US, Australia and everywhere soon. So the working platform for these financial institutions are going to go into a new manner. So if you call it a radical one or any kind of disruptive thing, it's cool. Why? Because it really is happening. This from ECB highlights you that. Now, if you look at the reference which they are talking here, they are talking about the adoption of ISO 2022. And then they highlight concretely, it analyzes global interoperability on the basis of a protocol for interledger payments being used between centralized ledger, example, operated by a commercial bank or a real-time gross settlement system operated by central banks and a DLT ledger. Mm, cool. So one is that from central bank. Another one is from a DLT technology, DLT ledger. Second, between DLT ledgers and also between centralized ledgers, it will be focusing, focuses, it it thereby focuses on back end arrangements of cross border fund transfers. So, what is the back end transfer there? Mm -hmm. If you understand clearly, it is the settlement process they are talking about. So, if you are talking about settlement using this protocol, using this DLT, what digital asset will you be using? Now, I leave that to you. It's completely up to you to think about that. So, I would just like to highlight as you see Bank of Canada as they are moving into this phase of digital dollar, what will be they using? I would really like to highlight this. I saw this article, Ripple decide to move to Japan and I was confused how that is possible. Like Brad never told that. And then I read this and they are highlighting, no, it's uh, Yoshitaka Kitao who highlighted that. And I searched and I couldn't find. Then I find this one from Crypto Area and a shout out, great shout out to her. She kind of highlighted that that never happened. So guys, FUD is always there. It would be kind of creating uncertainty, but you should know what is happening, what is the reality and what's not. And that's all for today, guys. If you so value for your time, please do support the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. If you would like to extend your support, you can use the PayPal, Patreon or the XRP Valve address given in the description below. I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.